Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. And his mercy endures forever. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now we continue with the Trisagion, the Holy God. that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 25 verses one through nine, which you'll find in the bulletin or on page 614 in the Book of Common Prayer. 
will read it responsively by half verse. <clears throat> to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and you have trusted all the world. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the Lord. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Today's second read comes from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered for... Uh, for sins once for all, the righteous and the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and uh, made a, a preconsidered proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured now saves you as a removal of uh, dirt from the body, but as an appeal of God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You're my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Wandering. We talked about wandering earlier in the class today. Wandering. Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien writes, uh, all who wander are not lost. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's things to be found and adventures to be had. And as we begin this Lent, which is certainly a seri serious time for, for penance, for preparation, for reconciliation, we can also understand Lent to be a time of, of adventure, of discovery, of renewal of uh, re-engaging the fundamentals of our faith in a way to make them even more vibrant, even more alive, to beckon us out on the road, out on the way, to begin a life of faith anew, uh, with less burdens, less things holding us back, holding us down, getting in the way, coming between us and God, coming between us and one another. This is the time to get that junk out of the way, or if it's not junk, maybe it's something good, but it's not something best. And it's to open the way, 
open the way. And so in this time of wandering, we, we share Jesus's experience. And he goes out into the wilderness after his baptism by John in the River Jordan. And he's at that time proclaimed, you know, God, this is my son, the beloved. And he is going to have an opportunity as he faces temptation also to reflect on the meaning of this, this work, this vocation, this life that he's been given to live, this purpose that he has. God so loves the world that God sends God's only son into the world, not for condemnation or death, but for life, for life, for redemption, for fullness of life. And so Jesus's life is going to be that, be that in God. I mean, sharing the eternal life of the Trinity, and in him we are to share that as well. Jesus will take our humanity to the very presence and life and dynamic Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, our humanity goes with him. Or he brings it to, to the Godhead, to, to the Trinity. And that's good news. Indeed, that takes place especially in the ascension with Jesus' humanity up to heaven, which we happen to celebrate as the Church of Ascension on a pretty regular basis. But the point being that this time of all times is a time for renewal, for growth, for rededication, for removing the things that, that hinder us uh, from God and from one another. The prayer book catechism says the purpose of the church is to restore all people to their place in God and with one another in God. And so that's what we're about. And that's why we're here. And the vestments and the sacraments and the, the, the beautiful church building and the fellowship and everything that we do and all the ministries and all the work it's for a purpose beyond just doing something for the sake of doing it it's doing it for the sake of knowing god better of living a life of faith more fully more authentically more energetically more passionately more more fully an expression of who we are and who we're meant to be and so in this time of Lent, yeah, we look at things that need to change so we can live more fully into that, so we can be who we're called to be. We can use the gifts that we've been given. We can engage the energy and the hope and the life that's not just ours to, to keep as a little private possession, but it's rather meant to be shared, meant to be known, meant to be transformative. And indeed, for Jesus, I mean, he comes back ready. He, he's ready to go to work. I mean, he, he's not silent anymore. After 40 days in the wilderness, I mean, he, he engages Satan. But besides for that, he's not been talking so much. He's not been, you know, engaging with other people. But he comes back and he's ready. And he begins to preach. He begins his public ministry. And it'll go to the very last day of his mortal life and then he lives in us and beckons us, calls us to continue that ministry. And we can talk about the church as the body of Christ in the world, and we're individually members of it. We can talk about baptism, which incorporates us into the life of faith, the life of God, the life of Christ, and we become members of that body. And by God's gifting, we've got things to share, life to share, gifts that are meant to be used, not just for ourselves, but for others. And that's when they take on their fullest meaning. It's not just your little private stash of goodies. It's everything you've been given can be shared, can be material for helping to connect. I mean, in a sense, we can talk about Lent as a time for a deeper connection, a deeper connection with God, a deeper connection with others in his name, others who may come, to God through us, either in church on Sunday to, as we welcome and invite and include and don't exclude, and in the same kind of way in our individual lives. Who knows who you will bump into at you know, a family gathering or at work or on the street or in some random moment, and that maybe, just maybe, you turn into the best translation of the gospel they've ever found. That, that can happen. Maybe by your generosity, by your concern, by your empathy, by your willingness to share, your willingness to be available, to apply the gifts you've been given, whether that's 
organization or teaching or ministry or service or whatever it happens to be. Each and every one of us are gifted to share God's love in the world, to reflect that greater light and share in our own meager offering of the light that's in us, that together it can be pretty powerful. It can be light for a world that can be otherwise a pretty dark and broken place. But in Christ, there's healing, hope, reconciliation. And those aren't just pretty words or nice sentiments. It's meant to be lived. And so that's, again, where the connection takes place. This isn't just some wonderful philosophical system or uh, a wonderful imaginative experience. It's meant to be lived. It's meant to be, you know, what you do with your feet when you're walking, what do you do with your your voice when you're speaking and what you do and where you put yourself and how you enable others to know God better because it's, it's best walked and not just taught. It's best lived. It's caught and not so much taught, although teaching does help, but it's, it can be caught, caught by example, caught by participation, caught by invitation bringing others into this life that's ultimately the hope that we're meant for, the hope that completes us and nothing less will do. And so as we begin this time of Lent, we uh, walk these days together, the, the 40 days, uh, the wandering in the wilderness. Don't, don't despair. It's not just about some, <laughs> you know, someone coming to call you out or point out your many weaknesses or something. Fond of saying, I remember, you know, being in a race and toiling up a hill and someone holding up a sign about, you know, you're going to burn in hell. You don't need to remind me of my limitations. I'm well aware of those. But rather, give me hope. Give me a glass of water if you can't give anything else. But maybe a word of encouragement. Maybe a promise of more. And that can be, in a sense, a reminder of the Lent that we're invited to. A Lent that's an adventure of faith. A Lent that will help us to wander well as we seek God to know God better and know one another better in his name. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally God, God the Father, God from God, God, light from light, light, true God from true God, for God and God made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For our sin, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified with the punishment of God. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to rejoice the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of God who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism of the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form two, found in your bulletin or on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, 
and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Emily Barr. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Marge, Jim, Norm, Barbara, Mackenzie, Brian, Julia, Pam, and Kathy. We also pray for those in the armed services, both at home and abroad. We ask your prayers for those on our diocesan intercessory prayer list, the Episcopal Church women, Cynthia Fassler, president, and the Episcopal men of the diocese, Bill Cox, president. Today in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the bishop, clergy, and laity of the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. I invite your own prayers and thanksgiving silently or aloud. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially for the birthdays of Jim Johnson, Josh Taylor, and Lindsay Powers, whom we, whom we remember today. Pray that we may have, have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Having already done the confession. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Share this Prayer B. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give it thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are yet did not sin. By his grace, we're able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your words spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. John the Baptist and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us 
as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.